the next homologous series we are going to look at is the alkenes. So ANE is the carbon carbon single bond. ENE is the carbon carbon double bonds. Okay, so where do we get alkenes from? Alkenes are obtained from cracking of long chains alkene. Okay, remember long chains alkene are lower in demand, high in supply. So we crack them, break up into smaller alkene, alkene and hydrogen gas. Okay, alkene with the double with the carbon carbon double bond are what we call unsaturated hydrocarbons. Why is it unsaturated? Because three carbon, one carbon atom is bonded to three other atoms. Okay, and then an additional atom can be added to the double bond. So draw your first member of alkene. You have two carbon. Carbon can form four bonds, four lines coming up from your carbon. Okay, if you draw it in terms of your dot and cross diagram, okay, the dots belong to carbon. So your four outer electrons. Right, one, two, three, four. Four outer electrons of each carbon. Okay, one carbon, this carbon is bonded to one other atom, two other atom, and three other atoms. Okay, so this is what we mean by unsaturated. Okay, an addition atom can be added across the double bond. So we have a double bond over here, right? But to hold the two carbons together, I don't need a double bond. So what is going to happen is one of the double bond will break. So the electrons will come over something like that. And these electrons that's hanging out on its own, can actually bond with some other atoms that has its own electrons as well. Okay, so from a double bond, it can become a saturated hydrocarbon with all your carbon-carbon single bonds. Okay, the general formula of alkenes is Cn, H2n. N is the number of carbon atoms. And because they have the carbon-carbon double bond functional group, they have similar chemical properties. It will show a gradual change in physical properties. Okay, so the first four members of your alkene is shown below. Two carbon, we name it ethene. Three carbon, propene, and so on and so forth. Okay, the first three carbon for your alkene family are gases. And the fifth carbon onwards, because size and mass increase, stronger INFOA, so there has higher melting point and boiling point, therefore it becomes a liquid. Okay, so what are the physical properties that your alkenes have? Alkenes have, when your number of carbon increases, okay, or when the size and mass increases, the boiling point increases, the density increases, the viscosity increases, Okay, this again is linked to the IMFO8. Okay, the previous videos that I have, there's a lot of explanation about this IMFO8 and how do we explain it back to these properties. So if you're not sure, please look at the previous videos. Okay, and then the flammability will decrease as the carbon increase. Okay, because the percentage by mass of carbon decreases, sorry, increases. When your carbon increase, the percentage by mass of carbon increases. So there's more carbon, makes it harder to burn to carbon dioxide. So flammability will decrease. Okay, butene has three isomers. Remember my isomers, they have same molecular formula. So the number of atoms of carbon and hydrogen is the same but they have different structure this is your isomers so for butene all of it will be c4h8 still c4h8 still one two three four five six 
One, two, three, four, four carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogen. So all have C4H8, but this one, your double bond is on carbon one and two. My double bond now is on two and three. And my, cover, my double bond is on one and two, yes, but on the carbon two, there is a metal group. Okay, so all three are isomers of butene. Okay, so we will look at the source of alkenes. Where do your alkenes come from? Okay, alkenes come from the fossil fuel and the crude oil when you dig it up from the soil. Alkenes come from cracking. So where higher, heavier hydrocarbons, heavier alkenes which are low in demand is cracked under catalyst or high pressure and temperature to form smaller and shorter alkenes, alkenes and hydrogen gas. Okay, so cracking, right, large long chain alkane is broken up into smaller, smaller alkane, alkene and hydrogen gas. Okay, so most of the time if we just say cracking, the, temper the conditions needed is high temperature and pressure. Okay, if we say catalytic cracking, the catalyst involved will be aluminium, which is my aluminium oxide, and silica, which is the silicon dioxide. Okay, so remember when we write equations, large alkane molecules, conditions you must write on the arrow. Okay, give you small alkane, alkene, and hydrogen. As long as the number of carbon and hydrogen adds up, it doesn't matter what compound, what smaller compounds you break it up into. Okay, so example C10H22, write the conditions on top over here. Okay, C10H22, you can break it up into C8H18 and C2, so C2 plus C8, you get C10, 18 plus H4, C2, H4, 18 plus 4, you get 22. As long as the carbon and hydrogen adds up, it is fine. Okay, it could also break down into C2H6. Or, or rather, if I have C2H6, I can break it out into alkene C2H4 and hydrogen gas. Okay, so alkenes come from cracking. Okay, some of the chemical reactions that your alkene undergo are because they are unsaturated hydrocarbon, they are more reactive. Okay, so they will undergo combustion reaction and addition reaction. So combustion reaction, this one, is the, exactly the same as your alkane. Okay, complete combustion gives you CO2, H2O. Incomplete combustion gives you carbon monoxide, soot, which is your carbon, and water. As long as your equation balance out, it doesn't matter how many carbon, how many carbon monoxide it is being formed. Okay, so if I compare alkanes and alkenes, right? Alkenes will have a higher percentage by mass of carbon. Okay, so it will give me a yellow sooty flame. Okay, it has a higher percentage by mass of carbon. Likewise, if you're not sure about this percentage by mass thing, look at the previous videos. Okay, so higher chance to get incomplete combustion, you will produce a yellow luminous flame. Okay, alkenes undergo addition reaction. Okay, addition reaction, what does it mean? Is when two or more molecules join together to form a to form one molecule and it is usually a saturated molecule. Okay, so if I have an alkene which is unsaturated, we have a double bond. Like I tell you, one of the double bond will break up so that the electrons over here and here is exposed. It can actually react with the another substance that you are trying to add across the double bond. So the A and B is being held by a covalent bond as well. There are electrons here, okay, the, what happens is, same thing, this covalent bond will break up, 
So one of it will join to here, the other one will join to here. So I have an A and I have a B. So when you join it up, you will get something like this. So from a double bond unsaturated, you get all your carbon, carbon single bond, it becomes saturated. It becomes a L K. Okay, so examples of addition reaction. We have halogenation, adding of your group 7. Okay, alkenes decolorize bromine in the dark, in the absence of UV. Okay, this is very important in the dark and absence of UV. Right, this will take place spontaneously. Okay, for alkanes. Right, for alkanes where it is your saturated hydrocarbon with the carbon, carbon, single bond, right? They will react with your halogens via substitution. Okay, via substitution reaction and you need to shine UV light directly at it as a catalyst for the reaction to work. Okay, but for addition reaction, where alkenes, which are unsaturated with the carbon, carbon, double bond, okay, it can be halogens can be added spontaneously. So spontaneously, we usually say Absence of UV plus absence of UV plus uh, in the dark. Okay, and it will go and decolorize your group 7 halogens. Like bromine, your red brown bromine will decolorize. Chlorine, your yellow green chlorine gas will decolorize. Okay, so in a reaction, we will write something like this. Remember to write your conditions on top. So absence of UV and in the dark. Okay, so my double bond, the electrons, one of it, one of the double bond will break. Okay, because I don't need a double bond to hold the two carbons together. And my bromine, which is your single bond, right, like that. Okay, this one will also break. So one of the electrons form a bond here. One of the electrons form a bond here. So you will get a dibromo, because there's two bromine, dibromo alkane or ethane in this case because there's two carbon. This one becomes a, becomes a alkane because it all becomes single bond. Okay, the next reaction, the next addition reaction we are going to look at is adding hydrogen. So adding hydrogen, we have hydrogenation. Okay, addition of hydrogen change the alkene to an alkane. So again, your double bond, it will break and the hydrogen single bond, one part of it will break, join to here and here. To break it up and open it up, you will get a alkane. Okay, so the conditions for addition of hydrogen, we will need to specify, write your conditions on top. We have nickel catalyst mm -hmm. and 200 degrees Celsius. So write it on top of the arrow is very important. Okay, each double bond in the alkene absorbs one mole of hydrogen. So you can see in you write a equation, this is 1C2H4 to 1H2. And it will give you 1C2H6. Okay, so each double bond absorbs one mole. So if I have a compound, for example, with two double bonds that look something like that. This one will react with two moles of H2 gas. This one will give me... All your double bonds will open up. Okay, so from your C3H4, it will open up to give you C3H8. 
right? Four hydrogen atoms is added, two moles of hydrogen molecules. Okay, so the number of moles of hydrogen indicates how many carbon double bonds are there. Okay, we have unsaturated vegetable oil contains a number of carbon-carbon double bond because of the word unsaturated. So we always say it is polyunsaturated. So unsaturated oils can be saturated by hydrogenation to give you a solid known as margarine. Okay, so when you add hydrogen to the oil, which is your alkene, when you add hydrogen, this increases the molecular mass and size. Right, so when your mass and size increase, again this leads to stronger IMFOA because mass and size increase is like manic, bigger manic, stronger attraction force. So there's stronger IMFOA between the molecules, so I need more energy to overcome the stronger IMFOA. So as a result, your melting point increase from a liquid oil, it will turn into a solid margarine. Okay, which one is more unhealthy? It is always the solid margarine because solid has a high chance of letting it being stuck on your blood vessels and then, you know, it could cause coronary heart diseases. Okay, the next addition reaction we are going to look at is addition of water, which is also known as hydration. When you drink water, you hydrate yourself. Okay, so addition of water, I'm not really wa adding water at liquid state, I'm adding steam. Okay, so steam is added to alcohol. So water H2O will have this structural formula. Right, so same thing when your double bond breaks on either side, one bond from your water will break as well. Okay, so one of it will break, one of it will join to here, the other one that breaks will join to here. So I'm adding the H and OH to your alkene. And when you add H and OH, the OH, this is your hydroxyl functional group. Okay, so hydroxyl is your alcohol. Okay, what are the conditions that I need for this reaction to take place? This is phosphoric acid. 300 degrees, 60 ATM, memory work for sure, the exam will come up right on your arrows. Phosphoric acid, 300 degrees Celsius, 60 ATM for hydration from your alkene to form your alcohol. Okay, and just now I was saying we add steam. Why do we add steam and not water? It's because steam is higher temperature. It increases the rate of reaction. Okay, last part, to distinguish between saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbon, we always use your aqueous bromine or your chlorine gas. Okay, so alkenes will decolorize bromine in the dark spontaneously, while alkenes do not decolorize bromine in the dark. Right, this one, the addition can take place spontaneously because your double bond can break. Right, but this one must shine UV light for substitution reaction to take place. Okay, and substitution reaction is one atom at a time. One hydrogen is being kicked out. 